Brad Tier 2 Warriors coming at you with a, another video. I got an email from one of my family members, and I have yet to actually research anything about Parkinson's. It just never really came up, nothing really connected it in my mind or whatnot. So I look up, how do you make a Parkinson's diagnosis. Well, I go online and uh, there's a, on YouTube, there's a Stanford uh, video on how to make this diagnosis. And we'll co come to find out there's no blood tests, there's no saliva tests. There's just physical observational diagnosis. They had some fancy kinesiology term. Um, Look it up. I can't remember what it is. Parkinson's diagnosis criteria. Um, it's a K word. Um, bradykinesia with uh, rigidity or inflexibility of the limbs. Um, your gait is then suppressed. Um, there will be like inconsistent movement and that sort of thing. But here I am thinking, well, science is, you know, going 25 million miles an hour and, you know, they've got the top stuff involved, right? These neurologists, man, they've got to know what they, they got to know their stuff, right? <laughs> These retards. So <laughs> here I go researching. Digging through all this stuff. I then watch a John Hopkins video where they describe how all these fancy pathways in this AS1 or something uh, Silucan, some fancy term, whatever. And uh, but everything was just either observational or the end result of the disease. And so I, I just couldn't believe it. I, you know, here I am expecting that, you know, there's some actual physical, you know, hard science. And the only hard sciences that they're going to able to do is do the actual pathways of the injury itself. And then so I'm looking at this pathway chart, interleukin A, ILA6, tumor necrosis factor alpha. Like you fucking assholes. So here are these neurologists have been pushing, oh, here are these fancy crazy drugs. It's got like a thousand side effects. And like, so you have neurological problems and you have motor problems. Well, here we're going to give you this drug that's going to jack up your brain. Not only that, but then also mess you up with a crap ton of other side effects. And then I'm researching, well, okay, so hypogonadism and uh, the traumatic brain injury and uh, Parkinson's. No videos on it at all. Couldn't find freaking anything and then I break open Google Scholar Parkinson's disease and traumatic brain injury and there's a hundred thousand results so on YouTube they're trying to prevent anyone from knowing that hormones and traumatic brain injury are interrelated and that testosterone is a dopamine agonist and well it's going to help treat it along with the physical signs of things. And it may not solve the motor stuff, but at least solve some of the other problems that you have. Maybe you have atrophy, sarcopenia, you've got you know, traditional muscle wasting. It's going to solve the brain nonsense because part of that is oxidative stress. So <laughs> looking through all this, I'm like, am I the asshole that has to make this video? Really? The guy without a degree... The guy who's a TBI patient himself, 
the guy who's trying to create his turn his bachelor's into like a real degree so I can get a physician assistant uh, uh, program and get into one of those. Then I'm just the one guy who has to research this and do this, and I'm the guy who's got to make a stupid video on it. The, and, and two, I mean, let, I'm gonna research. I don't even know. So Parkinson's and ketamine. Let's find out. Parkinson's and ketamine infusion. Ketamine treatment for depression. Okay, well that's not exactly related, but okay. Researcher testing ketamine bring relief. Okay, for the physical piece of it. Okay. Sub anesthetic. Okay, kinda. Uh, it just it boggles my mind I just cannot possibly imagine how it's I was just pissed off you know? so on the, uh, the if you go on the John Hopkins video you can see like two comments of mine just like lambasting these people like these stupid neurologists and how they got away with it so these people are straight up money laundering, right? They're getting all this money from the government and from all these sources. They're producing these crazy drugs. They're not they're not solving the, the end result. They're not solving the tumor crisis factor alpha, I can tell you that for sure. The only thing they're able to do is, you know, any sort of dopamine agonist kind of stuff or any of the motor stuff, maybe through some sort of pathway that you might be able to do it, but you're, you're not gonna, your end results aren't gonna be positive. So you're, you're only gonna get like a certain percentage of, of good outcomes. So you're because you're still not reversing the neuroendocrine side of it. And so you're, you're, you're saying that a, a disease is a neurodegenerative disease, but then you're not treating the neurodegenerative part of it. I, I mean, like, it's so stupid. Like, I, I just cannot possibly imagine how this happened. I mean, obviously it's money, graft, theft, money laundering, and traditional, you know, chicanery with uh, Big Pharma. But, I mean, it's just so stupid. And then also, like in the in the pathway, they're talking about the oxidative stress part, the mitochondrial dysfunction, and then um, they just kind of threw in there for just like an added benefit of uh, of toxicity and and chelation. I'm like, you fucking assholes. So major hospitals refuse to use NAC, N-acetylcysteine, or glutathione um, for chelation therapy or EMDTA um, to then get out all the toxic metals out of the body and then re replace the glutathione stores with NAC or with glutathione directly. They refuse to do any of that stuff. And then on top of that, then they're not even going to be doing, like, and all this, the ketamine stuff I'm seeing so far is just all on uh, nonsense about... Um, about depression and stuff like that, but you need a dopamine agonist. You need testosterone. You need estradiol for the neuro, the neuroprotective effects. You still need to the the whole point of me talking about ketamine was the fact that you need ketamine for the TNFA uh, countering effects of it and ILA six and ILA think it's two. Um, but that's why you use that. So you know on the on the John Hopkins video, I'm like lambasting these assholes. I'm like, okay, no. In an acute phase, like a, when a patient sees you, run some freaking, if it's not contraindicated for other things that got going on, run freaking ketamine infusions. You do five of them, it's my understanding that now you're just pushing. You do five of those. After that, throw, throw down some progesterone. Um, do some micronized progesterone for like a month. So that has the same effects for glutamate, either it goes up or it goes down. You can look it up, I can't remember. It goes up or it goes down. Do progesterone place all the hormones, and then while you're doing that ketamine infusion, you want thymus and alpha-1 because it interferes with ILA-6 and, uh, and other uh, bad inflammatory markers, and throw down some magnesium, and um, you're going to need vitamin D for sure, so 10, 10 KIUs of that. Um, you definitely want zinc in there at some point. And they want to replace all the hormones, and especially, I mean, okay, let's look this up too. So, <laughs> Parkinson's and growth hormone. Jesus, I'm just so, it, uh, this just boggles my mind. Growth hormone simulation tests have recently reported differential diagnosis. I don't know if that has to deal with that. 
brain injection of growth hormone. What are you talking about? It's systemic? So what the fuck do you mean? Why would you inject it direct to the brain? Brain injection of growth hormone, patients fight symptoms of the disease, experimental, using a pump of the growth factor, glial cell line derived neurotropic factors. Oh, it's the cell nonsense. These people were talking about some cell stuff, whatever. They're, they're talking about high level stuff in these John Hopkins videos and stuff, but this is all for like drug formulation and crap like that. I mean, okay, sure. Doesn't help anybody. Um, and nobody's going to do this. You can't give this to a patient. Like, here, let me install something in your brain. Like, okay, maybe somebody's going to do it, but I highly doubt it. Directly into the brain. Okay, this is five patients. Okay, like, whatever. I mean, I swear, this is straight up money laundering. <laughs> Look, I don't see how it could be anything else. Oh, yeah. I mean, endocrinologists have been sleeping on this, and they... The endocrine society needs to be completely demolished, and we need, like, an endocrine society with some balls. They're going to, like, straight up start, like, prosecuting and, like, putting these neurologists on trial. Because you cannot have this. You cannot have neurologists getting away with one, not even running the blood, because you know they're not doing it. And then on top of that, not even referring patients to an endocrinologist. And then the endocrinologists that they do see are freaking cancer doctors and, and diabetes doctors. So, like, oh God, I'm just so baffled by this. And it was just because I had a family member who, who had this. So, um, you know, I can just go on and on and on, but I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, research this in a tremendous way or anything like that. Um, okay, so here's the, here's the shot. Parkinson's patient comes in. They're gonna need ketamine infusions. Stop the TNFA, stop the ILA-6. Progesterone treatment after that. While you're doing your IVs for ketamine, throw on some thymosin alpha-1, give them some oral vitamin D, magnesium in the IV too, oral zinc, run all the hormones, retestosterone, the full thyroid panel, um, E2, Restradiol, growth hormone simulation tests, um, your cytokine panel for all your cytokines and inflammatory markers, which you already should have done, but in any case, just do it anyways. Even though you're treating it with ketamine, just do it. Um, replace all the hormones to optimal. Not normal, even for a 90 year old dude. You know, we probably want to be up there into the, the same principles apply. So, 3% to 6% of circulating pre testosterone, 30 NGDL to 60 NGDL. Who gives a shit what the endocrine society is saying? They're bogus and wrong. Um, they're, you know, so obviously not, it's based on symptoms. It's, you know, endocrine society doesn't get to tell you what your hormones need to be. Not based off of Dr. Travson's, uh, off of Travson's range. Call him up. Call him up at Harvard. Call, ask him what he told me. <laughs> like the same thing. Um, get it optimal. And I have proposed something that I find is uh, fairly interesting and that will be superbly beneficial is adding Oxandrin, Anavar, popular use, um, to provide the anti-sarcopenia effects. So, you know, running a trial of it, like normal, of a 
two to eight week trial of Oxandrin to give you that and, and utilizing it in the context of a of a, a physical therapy, that sort of thing, kind of the best usage of my, my opinion of it. Uh, but not when you're just getting dialed in on testosterone. Newbie doctors will try to do that and get in trouble. <laughs> Don't get in trouble. <laughs> that meaning that you're gonna screw up. So you, you just you want to keep things stable. So keep, keep things stable. Get dialed in. You know, at your at your ten to tenth to twentieth uh, week, then add oxandrin. You know, to your to your compounds and whatnot. Um, you gotta have D ribose on that stupid pathways thing. They're talking about mitochondrial deficiency. Won't. Well, retards t ribose a bag of it it's like 20 bucks for like five pounds or something it lasts you like a whole year and a half or something like it's it's fucking cheap as hell these neurologists i swear like when i get them in a room <laughs> bring in dr porkenthal around them we're strapping them to a chair <laughs> we're just gonna beat them senseless <laughs> Okay, all the jokes aside, uh, D-ribose, got to have it, need it, super important. Um, and there's some lymphatic kind of stuff that I was hearing about. They just kind of talked about it in passing. So I'm going to say lysine. Throw in some lysine. Uh, my understanding, the dosage is like three grams a day or something like that. Going in three to six grams a day of lysine. Can't hurt, at least interfere with that process or whatnot. Um, but the whole point of this is just foundational functional medicine. And you know, the other primary part are talking about gut microbiome stuff. K do clinical elimination, uh, elimination diet. Cut out all the bad food, go to literally like rice and chicken for like literally a month. Go to that, do the clinical elimination diet, you know, in that month, uh, according to the Chinese guy, Dr. Wang, I think maybe, he's like the top fasting researcher, whatever, it's like five days of fasting, cut it down like two to three days or something like that. Do a three to five day fast, you know, because probably something involved here with, uh, with a fatty liver and toxicity and stuff so you know do a two to two to five day fast something around there do the fast get to a stable level and then on top of this too we need epa and dha didn't hear anything about epa and dha and any of this stuff so add some fish oil super easy um, and in an acute phase, you want 10 grams a day, that's pushing it, but it's going to provide systemic anti-inflammatory effects. So even if you get some gastrointestinal stuff, fuck it, who cares? Um, you, you're in an acute phase, so you know you need to lower the inflammation. So 10 grams. And then go down to go down to six, six grams per day, which is like the the general there's a there's a number of EPA and DHA, I think it's twelve hundred milligrams or something like that. Um, but it's, if it's, it should be, it's all dosed the same in my understanding. So you just do six, six grams and that's the dose of EPA and DHA that you need. Um, and then you need to be running vitamin C IVs as well. So making that consistent. So once a month getting a vitamin C IV, so then you're able to lower all those inflammatory markers and oxidative stress and all that kind of stuff. Um, and according to Dr. Jim, um, who's a pharmacist, after you run your ketamine IV, you need to be running vitamin C as well. <sighs> I hate that I have to be the guy to do this. I mean, you know, at this point, my opinion, neurologists are completely discredited. If you're a neurologist, I'll just laugh in your face and walk away from now on. I have no respect for these people. I don't understand even how they have a branch of science in the first place. They should be in the lab. They should only be doing laboratory work. I don't understand how they're even treating patients at all. If everything they're doing is observational, and none of the work that they're doing is actually backed up by anything. Um, it's like psychiatrists. It's like, come on, you're a joke. You were created for counterintelligence in World War II. Prove me wrong. <laughs> tell, tell Freud and, uh, and Bernays' uh, uh, descendants who are currently working in, a, in, a, in our society that, and uh, see what they say. 
<laughs> Look up Bernays right now and his his descendant on what they're doing. Yeah, you'll 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 get a laugh out of that. But uh yeah, this is Brad from TRT for Warriors. Um reach out to Dr. Eric Primex.com to talk to Dr. Eric Fetty. Go to Dr. Bradford Garner at Mercy Hospital. Both of these fine gentlemen are MDs and do telemedicine nationwide and will help you. Um, reach out to Nurse Prack Justin Groach, who runs TheRestoreClinic.com. Um, those are the docs off the top of my head that will help. But they're experts in this. Don't get abused by neurologists. Don't feed into the nonsense. Functional medicine never changes. When it comes to inflammation and it comes to TNFA and ILA-6 and all that, there's stuff for this. You don't have to be on hard drugs. And um, there's ways to have a fantastic life without uh, having to deal with nonsense. Love you all. Have a fantastic Christmas and a Happy New Year's. Be safe out there.